Ladies and gentlemen, now it's time for a profile. Oh, yes it is. And uh, we've got the handsome Fabio Cannavaro coming oh, into the team with us all of My gay through. crush. Is I it? want one of them. One of the many. Takes every <laughs> box, doesn't he, Cannavaro? Doesn't he just? Mm. It's yeah. what bald men think they look like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm, like that. Yeah. Uh, born on the 13th of September 1973. Oh, just uh, six years after the summer alone. Just, just six years. Mm. Born in Naples, uh, one of Italy's more rougher cities in the south of the country. More rougher? Yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> Alan Ruffer. The roughiest. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, well, it's got a bit of a reputation, hasn't it, Naples? Yes, yes. I think that's fair to say. For being rougher than your average. <laughs> um, uh, <Dog>. his, <laughs> I don't know where this is going, Marcus, to be honest. His father played football for a provincial side. His brother currently plays for Napoli. Yeah, mm. Paolo. Um, Very good player in, indeed as well. It is important to know, actually, because uh, Fabio Cannavaro, he does speak a lot about Naples and where he's from, and I think people from that city do have a certain identity, mm. th- perhaps even a stereotype from the rest of the country. Um, but also, he, uh, Cannavaro suggests that it influences the football played there. He, uh, well, he seems to make out, um, from what I've, I've read about Cannavaro in this, in this nature, he seems to make out that growing up in Naples really helped him become the player he was because it's all right. about having fun and that's right. being outside mm, that's and people right. were a lot more like that in Naples mm. whereas he, he perhaps mentioned that they may not have been in, in other sort of more I yeah. suppose formal cities if you like well uh, yeah in a number of interviews um, especially one with 442 he spoke about his child and, and he said that um, Naples is different to the rest of Italy he said it was, it was more in common with Rio de Janeiro than Milan for example yeah. well, they get a lot of um, stick from the north don't they Naples people, they a, lot of them, lot, a lot of people um, you've got the Liga Nord who, who, who don't want um, the south to be part of Italy at all and obviously He's a very young country, not been unified for very long, and so. Well, he talked about um, a lot of people from Naples not actually supporting the Italian national side. And when right. Diego Maradona and Argentina played them in the World Cup um, semi-final of 1990, Mar- Diego. Well, Maradona was saying, you know, support us, kind of thing. And, and I think a few. I people- bet he was. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because um, was, was Canavaro not a ball boy at San Paolo as well? He, he was. Yeah, when he Maradona was, was there. He was a ball boy uh, at the age of 12 and uh, he was right there when they won the league with, with Maradona on the side and, and in the interview he said that night there was a big party for all the players and the ball boys were invited too. Yeah. Oh. I was 12. <laughs> <laughs> that is incredible. Isn't it? What a brilliantly formative like, yes. experience. <laughs> yeah. After that, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's very, I mean, nothing else is going to sort of, you know, Make you feel like you're a part of the fabric of the the club like that. Like getting yeah. hammered with Maradona. <laughs> yeah. Hoovered up on the night, you know, the yeah. at the age of 12. <laughs> on the night they've won the league. Your penis is, is the same size as mine. <laughs> <laughs> um Indeed, he talked a lot about playing football on the streets uh, in, in Naples, and uh, even when training with Napoli's youth set up, he would still go back and play football with his mates in the street using rubbish bags for goalposts or whatever they could find. And he said that, uh, as you said, Luke, that it, it helped his style of, of play. Um, he said, on the street, you play in a small space with few players, and it changes your approach. With no rules and little space, you become cleverer and more flexible, and, and we risk losing that. He's saying that football nowadays has perhaps become a little bit too rigid. But we often talk about you know Messi's the ultimate kind of street player that that kind of thing. Um, but interestingly enough, uh, when he played for Napoli's youth setup, he was actually a right midfielder. Right. He he wasn't a defender. Now you think of this kind of joyous football, you know, expressing yourself and all the rest of it. Um, he said it was uh, a point of his career uh, during the semi-final of an under-17s tournament that um, the, the the opposition had a particularly strong forward. Oh, he was given a man marking job, wasn't he? Like? Exactly. Yeah. The coach told kind of to track him wherever he went, and which is how he became a defender. Because in his teenage years, he said he learnt how to man mark, read the game from a defender's point of view, and also worked a lot on his jumping because he's only five foot nine, which mm. was not very mm. tall for a centre back. Um, and, and many said that he was more focused uh, than a lot of the other young hopefuls in the team which is why the coach could trust him with all these kind of instructions um, but he said it's perhaps something to do with the quality you're born with because he said that uh, timing is key to his game and claims that's something you don't learn it's innate mm. which um, I'm not going to disagree with, yeah. with from the great man um, and also another little uh, a lovely one was when he um, bre- was breaking into the first team he'd uh, sometimes train with the first team and when he was a youth player and got to mark Maradona in a few of the training sessions there's quite a famous story where he would go in quite quite sternly on on Diego and a couple of the Napoli coaches were like whoa 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 take it easy there and Maradona was like no 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 don't change your style pal you know you Mm. keep going weirdly out of character for Maradona though strange to even see Maradona turn up the training at Napoli (laughs) (laughs) he was like I'm glad you gave me a kick I fell asleep there because I am hammered (laughs) so this is what I don't bother coming (laughs) he was only at Napoli for three years uh, before moving to Parma 
Although while at Napoli he did win the European Under-21 Championships where he enjoyed uh, the company of such teammates as Francesco Toldo, Christian Panucci, Filippo Inzaghi and Benito Carboni. Mm. Yeah. Nice. Um, hands on the trophy yeah. uh, Napoli were short of catch, cash though and they needed to sell him so he went off to, to Parma teamed up with Gigi Buffon and Lillian Turam some of the players they had mm. uh, well, especially when they won the UEFA Cup when they yep. beat Marseille that's right uh, they beat Reims as well on, that, on the way to that I think final. they did yeah, yeah they had um, Buffon, Turam Sensini Cannavaro obviously Baggio was it Ortega in Fuzier, there? I don't think so Fuzier, um, Veron, Chiesa, Crespo Aspria yeah he was involved Abel Balbo oh Abel Balbo sure, yeah. yeah he was come in. on because Palmer are a funny side because, because when we grew up I remember them t- being a brilliant side yeah because yeah. we, we grew up yeah. watching Italian football in that era but traditionally they've not ever really been a big club they've never won Serie no. or anything they come no. second mm. and they've won a few cups and things like that but it was because they were owned by Palmer that, that massive company that, mm. was, that basically went bankrupt and then Palmer went bankrupt didn't they in the 18,000s mm, that's right they had to start again basically mm. it's weird because I mean they obviously assembled some side there well that's yeah, right Yeah, you, it's weird you do think of Palmer of not as being a giant of Italian in football but almost like a classic team but they're not it's just that we grew up in that era they yeah. happened to be for a, for a few years when they were bankrolled by well, like, yeah. well, like yeah. UA, UEFA Cup you know they were always in the UEFA Cup it's yeah Cup Winners Cup final yeah. I was I was um, reading up about Palmer because it's quite a fascinating story uh, not mm. so long ago because you love your dairy didn't you I do yeah you know, as you can tell yeah, it's probably looking at he's it. a sod for yeah. a yoghurt <laughs> apparently they, they, well, they, well, they went bankrupt <laughs> they had 13 billion pounds Worth of black holes in their accounts. That's hard to hide. The guy who ran it. I mean, trading in the wrong currency is a basic error. <laughs> yeah. The guy who went to jail, the guy who founded them, went to jail for 10 years in Italy. No one goes to jail in Italy, do they? No one comes out of jail. <laughs> That's right, yeah. Oh, God, it's Lira, is it? Fuck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, are, they are screwed then. <laughs> Why is this not adding up? 13 billion lira. What's that? 13 billion pounds. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> I better lay low for a bit. Yeah. <laughs> Sell him. Sell Cannavaro. <laughs> Sell him now. <laughs> uh, him. Back to Cannavaro. Yeah. Uh, he did win a couple of um, uh, Coppa Italia. Italias yeah. there um, he was at Palmer for seven years would win another uh, Euro Under 21 championship there also made his international debut and played against England in a World Cup qualifier 1998 um, 1998 World Cup qualifier that's it was in 90, was, that's that's 97 though it was, what he knew he was a player an honour for the man playing against England at, Wem- his luck. at Wembley yeah. uh, Italy won one nil. Zola scored and oh he did was, they yeah funnily <laughs> enough uh, England didn't score uh, he was brilliant <laughs> no point. yeah we got the nil yeah. um, to be fair England did go ahead of uh, Italy there um, yeah, yeah. True, yeah. Um, uh, he kept Alan Shearer quiet very quiet I wish he'd keep doing it <laughs> yeah <laughs> can we get him on match of the day <laughs> get him on the sofa <laughs> <laughs> he kept Big Soul quiet as well that day yeah. um, he kept everybody quiet um, he also he, he did play a bit at uh, World Cup 98 but it was at Euro 2000 where the world really saw his quality part of a back three with Nesta and Juliano with, with Maldini coming in as well as cover um, it's not a bad player to have cover is it <laughs> yeah actually was Maldini cover he certainly those four were the, the, the players used in that back three reached the final narrowly lost to France yeah. two mm. years later Italy went out to South Korea in the second round of the World Cup because they will not learn no but they had their revenge against France I think they did yeah. um, uh, in the same year though 2002 uh, Cannavaro moved to Inter didn't have the best of times there Inter it's a weird in. period for Inter where pretty much everyone who played for them didn't have the best of times well, they spent a lot of cash I mean he was about 20 million pounds <laughs> And then after a couple of years, he was um, sold to Juventus in a, a sort of weird exchange with for a sub keeper or something like that. Right, very, very odd. But he was reunited with Turama Buffon once again, and they won the league twice. Although after the Calciopoli scandal, those league titles were taken off him. Mm. Um, but he's not having any of it, so you know he's doing what everyone else does. You're still claiming him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Let's move on. And then of course Juve went down to Serie B. A uh, number of players left. He was one of them. Went to Madrid where he won two La Ligas. But before he won those titles, it was the small matter of the 2006 World Cup in Germany. Mm. That back five. <laughs> I'm having that all day. Buffon, Grosso, Nesta, Cannavaro, and uh, Zambrotta. Yeah. Mm. And yeah. then, but Materazzi came in for Nesta. He did, yeah, because Nesta got injured against Czech Republic. That's what Nesta does. Yes. Yeah. Until, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, so I mean, Cannavaro and Nesta had formed quite the centre back partnership, as you could imagine. Bloody hell! I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's really strange actually. Can you imagine the manager of the other team in the, before the game, right, chaps? We're not going to score today. Yeah, so we need to keep, keep a clean sheet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if they score, in trouble. Yeah. Although oddly enough, um, apart from Zidane's penalty. The US were the only team that scored against them. I think it was an own goal, but um, very strange. 
<laughs> Very strange indeed. Um, so yeah, Matarazzi and Nesta, um, sorry, Matarazzi and, and Cannavaro um, formed the, uh, the, the centre back partnership, which would go on in the tournament to win them the cup. Uh, and the final match of the tournament was Cannavaro's 100th cap for Italy, where he led them to victory. He was, he was for me, his best game was against Germany in the semi. Oh, he was amazing in that. What a game it was. So though. yeah, he was so good in that. Mm. And uh, Matarazzi was all, it was all about Matarazzi in the final. I mean, he yeah. scored the goal, got to dance, I've scored a penalty in the shootout as well. Yeah. The Matrix. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah, he loves it. Not even their first choice centre back. No, no. He said Marazzi also, also said something really funny recently in like a, like a press interview. That's book. like that's like Phil Jagielka or something in Brazil, <laughs> like getting a goal in the final and all. Right? Yeah, exactly. You know what yeah, I mean? yeah. But Matarazzi said recently in either a press interview or I don't know a book he released or something. He was asked what he said to Mourinho when Mourinho left Inter. Um, because they're really good pals aren't yeah they? I remember them seeing them both cry yeah and he yeah. said something like, he says he said something like I can't believe you're leaving me with Benitez <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if it's true but that's what he said oh yeah. dear oh dear oh dear um, so it was after the final when uh, Cannavaro captained Italy to um, lift the World Cup trophy that he got the nickname Il Muro di Berlino the Berlin Wall yeah which was uh, and it's also nice for a Neapolitan to lift a trophy for Italy well yeah. it, it, indeed it is and he, and he said that was a huge thing for the people of Naples he said a lot more people Supported Italy because of him, because of him um, mm. in, in Naples, and he, he always sort of said in a weird way. It was, some people thought of it as almost revenge for some reason. I, I don't quite know why, but <laughs> Italy, yeah. yeah. He, and also, only <clears throat> defender to win World Player of the Year, correct? Mm. Beat Zidane and Ronaldinho in two thousand and six. Not bad, uh, is it? And he won, never win. That and he season. won European mm. Player of the Year, and I think I have. Beckenbauer won it I'm not sure if another defender did so he's, he's one of only two maybe three defenders to have won that trophy as okay, well. right. um, because FIFA World Player of the Year was of course from 91 to 2009 and then it merged with the Ballon d'Or whereas Correct. the European Player of the Season has been going on a hell of a lot longer um, so back at club level uh, after that incredible World Cup where he was one of the best players and Dunphy said remember Raymond Dunphy yeah. the, the famous uh, loud Irish pundit he yeah. said that because uh, remember that sort of time I think Rio Ferdinand might have signed a new contract and Dunphy said if, if Rio Ferdinand is worth 100 grand a week then Fabian Cannavaro is worth 100 million a day <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 don't give um, the controls of your company to that guy Palmer no. um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that's what we're doing wrong yeah. so back at club he did win two league titles with, with Madrid and a star studded team uh, before he, he did started to show uh, signs of old age he went yeah. back to Juve for a season Lionel Messi mm. was pulling his pants down fairly regularly <laughs> yeah. at that point I seem to remember Indeed. I wanted to gloss over that yeah. gloss um, over until he get to his termination <laughs> <laughs> well, terminated. oh yeah Cannavaro your career has been terminated oh yeah that's right yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, he missed out on Euro 2008 although he did win his 127th cap uh, against Brazil the Confederations Cup uh, in 2009 beating Maldini's record he would go on to, to gain 136 caps for his country uh, which of course is, is is a record. He's the most cap player. How many? Yeah, 136. Most oh, cap yeah. player in Italy's um, Italy's history, which is bloody ridiculous, <laughs> considering the players they've got, especially centre backs. It's almost more appearances than Kieran Dyer's had in his career. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's it. Um, we had time to kick Kieran Dyer. I'm only joking. Not really. <laughs> not really. And then he was at World Cup 2010, which was very disappointing, of course. Um, yeah. But let's not. Uh, let a famous not couple draw. of battling draws against New Zealand and Paraguay, was it? <laughs> yes. Finished by a loss to Slovakia. Yeah, well, you know, yeah. they won it in 2006. Uh, and after this, uh, he wound down his career in Dubai, as you would. Yeah. Rocking a lovely could. small pair of pants, I'd imagine. <laughs> <laughs> he does rock a pair of pants very well. Do you know, he really played yeah. because he was riddled with injuries and he didn't even have a medical when he went to um, Al Ali. They were just like, yeah, well, Cannavaro will take him. <laughs> didn't give him a medical when he turned up and he was Sounds like. like positive for him. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't he involved um, in Al Ali in some way still? Yeah, I think, I think he still lives out there, doesn't he? I believe he still lives in the Middle East. He's got one of those jobs where he's sort of honorary. They, 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 they just hand them like honorary the, the, money received. They just hand yeah, them exactly. a penthouse to their hotels more mainly. Yeah, exactly. Oh, we've got a, you know. The, I think Drogba's got one out there. Yeah, though. the club basically say, um, when you're out with your mates, will you tell them about us? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's one of those kind of jobs. Um, and then he retired in the summer of, of 2011. Um, but I mean, an in- incredible player. Um, yeah, I just remember him as being like, you know, an excellent reader of the game, good timing in the tackle. You know, really, really good. You know, mm. he, and he only really became a sort of muck and bullets type defender when he got a bit older. When he, mm. you know, which is fair enough. Yeah, when he, when most he should, English defenders start like yeah. that. He sort of <laughs> he brought Messi down at one point and, and looked up at the referee as if to say, "What, what would you want me to do?" Do you know what mm. I mean? I remember Bobby Zamora turning him. Uh, in the Europa League yeah he had a shocker in that game didn't he but yeah I mean before that you know he was a very very classy defender really neat you know that's, a, that's oh, yeah. the thing that re- I really oh, what remember about that about tackle Kenabara. on Shevchenko yeah you sent, you sent around a little video um, a few hours ago of uh, of him doing like a kind of 
what would you call it he puts, plants a standing foot <clears> and then moves his right foot behind his left foot and just takes the ball off Shevchenko yes. Shevchenko hits the deck and he just doesn't know what's how, how it's happened it's like a little like, flicked tackle <laughs> yeah. I think he was just, you know, such an intelligent defender really good reading the his game, anticipation you know. as well yeah yeah, one of the one of the all time greats for sure Absolutely. indeed, indeed. Uh, one of the greats of the modern era and I'll finish with a quote from, uh, from El Diego himself he was talking about <laughs> <laughs> talking about his time at uh, Napoli he said the kids used to panic when they trained with us and all the more so when they saw me but one kid was different a little lad who somehow seemed huge every time I saw him I left with the feeling that I had witnessed a phenomenon hey. and that was Fabio Cannavaro in case you wanted to do it was the Demons Hall of Fame